Hi. Yeah, we can we can blend you in. Say hi. Yeah. Say hi. This is Karibe. And this is Farid. <laughs> and Samo. That's me. And uh, good friends of mine that I had. I was so lucky to run into you at the Type Thursday group like, shortly after you came to New York. You said, yeah. Yeah, like, after Copa Union, this was like the second event you went to. And immediately we started talking and become good friends now because I love what you're doing. And like, both of you, so hard working on the graphics um, like you can see like you post all the time what i can see i'm always like wow like, <laughs> the, 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 what what else has she done she's printing books she's an editor she is a researcher she's a teacher um you're a typographer you're a graphic designer you're a photographer you're a web designer you're <laughs> what else do you do so much originally you're from venezuela yeah so, we're latinos we were yeah. born in venezuela and we moved to New York three years ago. And you were working in Venezuela? Before, yeah, so. we've been graphic designers. That's what we studied. Hmm. I specialized in books and Sam Molsey branding. With a very, very branding. famous type designer as well <laughs> over there. Oh, she <laughs> is. Yeah. She's a very famous designer in Venezuela as well. <laughs> He likes to say that to people. Oh, look it up I on Wikipedia him. now. I pay yeah. him actually. Yeah. Yeah. You, just, like, you work so much with materials and inks and papers and you have printing presses and uh, weights and, and sizes to think of. How do you combine it with the computer? How does that even come together? Well, it's really interesting because I would say 80% of my work is outside of the computer. Conceptualizing, mostly reading um looking for samples talking to authors but then i have to focus all of that energy and concept in the computer and to have a really well produced book you actually have to go things go hand in hand mm. the production process begins the moment you open a file or set up a file on the computer even the way the margins are set up the bleedings all the pre-press process in the computer is what's gonna make those materials look the way they do. But you do all this research before you even start. Yeah, research is the yeah. most important part mm. of my creative process. And then um, it's more like a tool to get it ready for the printer. Yeah. <clears throat> How did you learn that? Like, <clears throat> Well, my relationship with computers is complicated. Uh, I remember when I was in design school, studying design was, you know, um, let's say it was expensive and you needed to have a lot mm. of tools, including a computer. I didn't have a computer in the beginning. I got a used computer that was kind of wonky and I couldn't even see the colors. I had to read the descriptions of the colors <laughs> and make sketches wow. of the color palettes that yeah, I wanted yeah. to work with. Uh, but I, that also taught me a lot of discipline mm. because since I was always on the labs at the university or borrowing computers from friends, the time I had was limited. So mm -hmm. that gave me oh. a lot of structure. I had to come with a plan. Yeah, I had to yeah. come with a plan. And later on in the country, in Venezuela, there was a electric uh, oh. crisis. Yeah. So when you had power, you had to you know, use it wisely. Right. So that gave me a lot of dis discipline with times in the computer as well. Right, right. But there is a, a big history of printing though in South America. That, yeah, you know, huge, mm, huge. Mm. And that's what I do research on at Columbia, actually, Columbia University. Because like Farid and Samo have so many titles that they do. You're a web designer, you're a photographer, <laughs> you're a researcher, you're a, um, a graphic designer, obviously, a teacher, um, and uh, t typography plays a big part of, of your job. So do you often work together or do you have um, yeah. it overlaps? Yeah. yeah. Sam is a huge part of everything I do. Not only morally, him as my husband, but mm. all the photography of the projects, he oh, takes right, care of yeah. that, all everything web related. Or if I'm struggling with something, he always brings a new perspective. It's a constant conversation. So I'm happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I think we're a design team, definitely. Yes. We are. And when you do projects, do people come at you or do you approach them or it's just been your reputation has been? Or how well, did you get started? I would say the biggest advertisement for my work is word of mouth. Um, a lot of people either see a book on a bookstore or mm. go to a show or someone recommends me and that's how everything starts to getting set up. But my website plays a huge role. Right. So on my website, I have this mm. section that's called shop. 
-hmm. And yes. you can book a consultation there. Usually a consultation is like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I've kind of created a business model where people can approach me with questions, either develop the project with me or not, but they mm -hmm. clarify everything about the project, scope, time frame. And your experience. Yeah, and I give them feedback. And if they decide to go through with the project, mm -hmm. then we have several meetings and keep it going. Mm -hmm. But I think that model of having consulting, meeting me, either in person or online, gives the, the other uh, client gives the client a chance to, you know, see how we will how be like. How this is working out. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a test run. It's but like, also you have a lot of proof that you already done these books and projects and all of, so that they, you can show them like what yeah, you've done Yeah, my portfolio. Yeah. Or I think mm -hmm. something that helps a lot actually are the awards. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think um, awards prove anything at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah. You can be really good and don't have any, or you can suck and have many. <laughs> but I think they also legit legitimize somehow in right. the eyes of possible clients the fact that you are good or that the project can be can reach more places. You know, I also mm -hmm. think that self began projects or self started projects play a huge role in that. Oh yeah, because yeah. you get more room for experimenting. Oh, you can do something really cool because there's no limit to it. Yeah, yeah or sometimes uh, you do something amazing that maybe someone might not um, find, want to finance or want to back up with yeah, their money. Right. But when they see it done by you, maybe in a smaller scale, they get excited and oh, they okay. invest in your idea. If you had three weeks and uh, no limits and time or money, what projects would you like would be your dream project? I think we would love to do together a photo book because yeah. she's the expert on book mm -hmm. and I can do the photos. <laughs> yeah, we've been wanting to publish a book with, yeah. he actually has this really vintage, vintage, no, old camera and he got a lens that has mold in it and oh. the photos oh, yeah. look like so dreamy and he took a lot of photos of his grandparents in Venezuela, oh, okay. uh, outdoors and indoors and We've been talking constantly about doing a photo book with those photos. Mm -hmm. And I have a thing for grandparents, so it's perfect. <laughs> She's she always tell, telling me like, you have to do something with this, like a little photo book, something like that. And I'm like, eh, it's not really my thing. And then uh, one day she came with, this is for you. And she print and sew Oh yeah, the binding everything. Yeah, a, oh, little, uh, a little sign. Mm -hmm. Chat book. A little chat scene. book, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> with the photos of my grandfather. Oh, and so you I so you did that cry. prototype project that yeah. you were saying. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I started to cry because it was beautiful. And now you believe in it, right? <laughs> now oh, you yeah. want to do it. Now he wants to finance it. I believe in it. I believe in all what she does. I, I'm like <laughs> her biggest fan. Oh, good. I yeah, married I, my stock. I heard you yeah. take uh, photos of her from the, like, off corners from where people came up to you and <laughs> yeah. said that there's somebody stalking you morning like no like, no that's no, just no, my it's husband. my it's my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do that <laughs> so we should all marry our stalkers we know that so that's what Craig said before as well but um so that would be a good indesign product to do a photo book because yeah indesign yeah, is yeah indesign is amazing <clears throat> for laying out books especially photo books because mm. you get a huge sense of everything pre-pressed you and get to you see can fly through it yeah pre-fly yeah. uh, color setup even spot inks or special colors oh, right. yeah. everything so mm. InDesign is definitely like the program that I use the most and then uh, printers also good with InDesign they always yeah it, InDesign is what <clears throat> printers use mm -hmm. yeah. I would say 99.9% .9 of printers is there anything in InDesign that you think is like your best tool the tools that I use are not necessarily the tools that other people might use. Okay. But you can still make it work. Yes. Like, let's say I use the pre-flight panel a certain way, or I use the layers a certain way. Right. Or when working in book covers, some people like to treat it as three different pages, including right. the spine. I mm -hmm. like to treat it as one, and I add up as more pages are included within yeah, the book. Yeah, we, we did some kind of layout and custom sizes. Yeah, and the so course. I think that... Yeah. InDesign is for everyone and you can customize it the way that you that your needs uh, guide you to. Yeah, especially if, it, if you have a lot of pages to manage. Um, yeah, and the book option books. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like when you're working with uh, huge bulks of work or very large book blocks, the mm -hmm. book option is really good. So you can have multiple 
files within one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you have different chapters all in, in the yeah. one file. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. so organizing it into chunks. Yeah, and, and the packaging also yeah. options are really good. Actually, Farid doesn't use it only for books. You design yeah. a lot of InDesign. You use it for doing like posters and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's that? <laughs> well, I think InDesign, people are afraid of InDesign sometimes. They That's think true. it's oh, yeah, uh, like difficult. Oh, yeah. But I think it's eas way easier than other Adobe programs. And with a few tricks here and there, you can do posters, postcards, catalogs. You can even do branding related stuff. Right. And it's so, it has so many mi micro typography options mm -hmm. that it just right. makes the work process way easier. Yeah. Like for mm -hmm. me, InDesign is my go-to. Yeah, it's like you, you cannot do that much micro typography in, in Illustrator, for example. No. Right. No, yeah, it, yeah. Everything's going to be out of the place. But mm -hmm. in InDesign, you can adjust it really well. And mm -hmm. you're going to go look and read. Yeah, especially for, for branding projects that I do too, or like a CD, you have a booklet with page numbers maybe, you have like Definitely. a tray card, you have the round uh, shape, you yeah. can all these yeah. different um, uh, sizes, but you can keep it all in one project so you can move Yeah, and something like really cool when and... working with typography or mm -hmm. uh, lettering or even importing things from other programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, I work with this type designer, Mirko Velimirovic. Mm -hmm. He always sends me SVGs. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, I yeah. open an <laughs> Illustrator, <laughs> yeah. modify uh, them, and I import them as smart objects into InDesign. Okay. Or you can even have a font file and then work within it on InDesign. And I think yeah, it's great for that. Right. And yeah, SVGs, you can scale the vector base. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to worry about resolutions and you can exactly. go wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go SVG. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that uh, you can give somebody as an advice to mm. not give up at this point? Or? I have two words of advice to students. One would be, uh, I come from the punk ethos. So do it oh, yourself yeah. would be my first advice. Oh, do okay. it yourself. Uh, and do it yourself doesn't mean do a piece of crap. Do it yourself means you have control over every part of the process. So do right. it right and do your best. Yeah. And my other word of advice would be make mistakes. Oh, a lot right. of people are really afraid to make mistakes. Uh, so they avoid doing certain things uh, because of embarrassment, because of ego, because of pride or because, you know, uncertainty. Mm. Uh, but I say the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. And being a student, it's actually a constant essay. So okay. take the time of being a student to and make right mistakes. Right now is a good time to make yeah. mistakes. Yeah, this is the moment to <laughs> make mistakes and you mm. should make them. Mm. So yeah. I would experiment a lot and you know, try to get your hands on as much as many projects as you can. As many medias like you can do oh, yeah, a, yeah. like a business card, but actually like an interface for uh, augmented reality. You can do some animations like for a video. Do try to do any kind of media that you got your hands on. Yeah. Don't be afraid of. Don't be afraid of interactive getting, PDFs on yeah, InDesign. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be afraid of getting your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. that's the time for no, it. No, I like that too. When when people have a little bit like they can pick up a, a camera and do a nice yeah. photo and understand how to do it at the same time as they can like lay out a, a branding material or work with technology. Yeah. And just you have to know everything a little bit. Yeah, it's like ah, I'm missing some content here. Oh, let me do some video. Oh, I'm going to do some, I'm going to put some plastic in there. Oh, look at the colors. Mm -hmm. Do something. <laughs> Don't be afraid of that. Yeah, no, I remember when I went to college, I, I, I started many concepts that I, that I wanted to do and I still refer back to them sort of I That's so like cool. there's still kind of a thread that goes through that yeah. I, like go back to so projects you have, you have like your own personal archive yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, that's really good to build. Yeah, yeah. You, that's yeah. totally, that's a great thing to bring up. To, Take to care of your archives. <laughs> yeah. Digital, Digital archiving is important. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's mm. a good one, honey. Yeah, that, like build a library of <laughs> stuff you <Right>. like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this is great to see you. And also, um, we're going to cut into like showing you some of the work that you actually oh, yeah. done. Sure. Like, I would present love to. some of the project and uh, um, maybe even uh, open one up uh, in the computer if you have a file open. Yes, if, of course. Um, but also the finished projects when they're bound, it's obviously it's really nice to look at that. So, yes, very of course. Cool. Yeah, and you have a lot of it. So, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's <true>. Thanks. <laughs> So these three projects here are from my publishing house, Ediciones Letra Muerta. 
And this one was a co-edition with Kenning Editions from Chicago. All of these projects I've made on InDesign, this particularly I like to show as an example because everything was made in-house from the layout to the printing to the actual spraying and even the binding. This is a tree punch binding. And all of this you can do on your own. Basically it's three separate InDesign files for each format. And this one is based on a 1765 Bible. And on one side it reads in Spanish and in one side it reads in English. This was also set up as two different InDesign files and this is so. This example I really like to show because it has a miniature and it's French folded. And then the second volume has five different formats and five different papers. This means that each section of this book is a separate InDesign file. The cover is also a separate file. Last but not least, this is one of my most recent books. This was exhibited at Center for Book Arts. So for cover and flaps, I did a file. And then for the inside, I had three different types of files. All the pages that were duotone like this, or like this on one. All the small inserts that were on different paper and different treatment on another file. And then the color pages like this on a separate file. So this is also cost effective for when you're doing the math of how much paper, how many plates, in the case of offset like this book. So the, that kind of thing is really useful. That was great. I'd like to um, get some details of this book a little bit okay. better. I'd like to just, just zoom in to see, just like the, I think the paper. Um, it's really cool. There's a book I